All right, everybody, welcome to Virtual Bourbon. My name is Steve Akeley, and we have Courtney Cantrell with us, as always, doing her bartender hacks. But today, it's a special day, right, Courtney? Oh, yes. Because <laughs> it's the Halloween version. So yeah, the that's pretty years. cool. <laughs> so you are a big Halloween fan, right? I am. Um, I don't, I, there's just something about it. Like, I specifically went to Disney World this year just to see their Halloween decorations. So I was like... <laughs> just can't absorb enough of it but i hear mcnew is the same way so yes very much so yeah, yeah she goes all out for sure Thank you. <laughs> yep yeah so that's that's pretty cool so and and why why the the such a big halloween fan do you think what, what do you like about it hmm, i think it, i mean i think it goes back to childhood it's like some of my favorite memories are being at my granny's house and going trick-or-treating and just like you know, you get to dress up and just go out and have fun, but it's not exactly the same these days, you know, mm -hmm. obviously this year is a little different with COVID. Yeah. This but year. I feel like kids yeah. don't really go out anymore and it makes me kind of sad. <laughs> like, yeah. It, it's yeah. like a combination. Of course, I've got, uh, um, you know, a 23 year old. So I, you know, I kind of got to see the different phases when she was really young. It was kind of the, you know, the normal trick or treating thing, like when I was a kid, but by the time she got a little bit older, uh, it, it started to transition to on Halloween, all, somebody would host a party. It seemed like, and the kids wouldn't go out trick or treating or, you know, and the trunk or treat stuff is big too. So right. they have a thing at the school and then everybody would kind of do that. And that, that yeah. seemed to take really precedence over the old idea of just going around and knocking on doors like we used to mm. do when I was a kid. So. Yeah, I think it's a little bit safer these days. I mean, that way, but it's just not as fun, in my opinion. I oh. mean, I have a like memory. Every year we would go in the neighborhood, and like our, you know, where the house is with the full size candy bars. There was like one house that gave you a soda and like a bag of potato chips, so you weren't like just eating candy. And then there was like one guy in my granny's neighborhood that actually had a hook for a hand. <laughs> he like, like legit so we were like kind of afraid to go to a store but you know you got to you got to get that candy i never understood the hook for a hand I, it seems like it'd be more dangerous than helpful for the most right. part yeah. like how do you protect yourself when you're asleep and rolling around right right yeah <laughs> oh, that, that's crazy my dad always had a halloween uh theory and, and looking back it's probably greedy on his part but he, his was always no regrets so it was like when we said we're tired he's like keep going you can you can do 10 more houses uh you know because he wanted he didn't want us to get back to the house and be like you know I, we can go back out so he wanted to make sure he walked us as far as we could but then i'm thinking now it was all just so he'd have more candy when we got back. <laughs> it was all probably for himself He's like, oh, those last 10, uh, 10 I got, that, that, that's mine. That, you know, that's the dad tax. Yeah. I, I love that. And then you like sit down with your siblings or like your cousins and just exchange candy. For, right. So you got your favorites too. It's just a good time. Yeah, yeah. It's always cool. Yeah. And uh, I don't know. There was always something, uh, you know, it, it's just like being a kid, especially, you know, with your parents. And it seems like, um, you know, mom would pull out the same decorations every year. And you think you go through a phase where it's kind of hokey. And then you're like, oh, when you kind of go back as an adult and you see that same, so it's like, oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah. You know, you know the exact same skeleton that's been on that door since I was, uh -huh. you know, five years old is on the door. So it's, it's, uh, it's neat stuff. So I, I, I'm a fan of Halloween too. Yeah. Yeah. So we've got a fun little episode today here. We're going to be making some cool stuff. And it sounds like first you're even going to start, uh, you know, something that's kind of an accessory to cocktails with, with some ice, right? Yeah. Uh, I think it's something that people kind of overlook, but you can definitely play around with it to just add another element to your cocktail. So what I came up with is um, a really simple drink on its own. You know, it's a combination of a Pisco and whiskey sour. So it start, starts off really simple, but then um, I made some ice as well with uh, cucumber juice or water. Or I don't know what the proper term is, but uh, cucumber juice and water as well, so that as the ice starts to dilute, the flavor of the cocktail changes as well. So to cool. do that, this I also have uh, this little this little guy over here. So um, so I just have one egg white. And I don't know if you guys notice, uh, there, she has two screens up too. So you can see her yeah. talking and you may focus on that. But there's a second screen if you put it on where, <laughs> where her hands are, where you can see production this time. So we have that, so. Yes. So what do I have here? That's lemon. Okay, so I've got an egg white and then it's gonna be one ounce of fresh pressed lime juice. 
just like one of my favorite things in the world. There's nothing like fresh squeezed lime juice. One ounce of Pisco. And one ounce of Rittenhouse Rye, my favorite. That is a bartender favorite for sure. Yeah. <laughs> it is. I noticed that a lot of them uh, use, use that. I mean, it's just, I mean, it's bottled and bond, which I typically go for to begin with. And it's mm -hmm. rye. And it's just, you know, so affordable, which for the bartenders uh, we need in our lives, especially yeah. this year. So, and then that's a half ounce of two to one Demerara syrup. Um, so I believe I talked with y'all about reverse dry shaking before. Uh, we might need a refresher though. We're not professionals, so. <laughs> yeah, so it's just gonna be you add your ice first. Okay. And shake that. So then, let's see. So then you strain out the liquid. And dump your ice. Dump your ice, and then you're gonna give it another uh, dry shake, so without ice. Okay. So what that does, reverse dry shake, it really um, gets like a much better like frothy head on there. So you, uh, you'll see when I add the ice. So just pour that into a Collins glass. And then, or are you starting? No. Oh, I forgot one thing. Hold on. This is, okay, so this cocktail is called uh, Mary's Cure-All after uh, Marie Curie. Uh, so I'm adding some green food dye to it to give a nice like radioactive green color. Ah, nice. Because, you know, she pioneered research in radioactivity. So there we go. And it's Halloween, so who doesn't want a green cocktail? <laughs> so then we add the ice cubes in there, which are also green. Add another one. Little frothy, it's fine. Um, and that's it. Oh, so then to garnish, got your cocktail. Just add like a really pretty dill sprig. Okay. And then um, some silver sprinkles Ooh. for that, you know, nice radioactive touch. And that's it. Nice. Yeah, so as, like I said, as you drink it, you'll get more and more cucumber. It's pretty cool. What's really it taste like? Fun. What's it taste like? Uh, initial drink there, like that. Um, have you ever had a pisco sour? No. Before? <laughs> yeah. Haven't. Okay. Yeah. So it's kind. Of, I mean, it's like a pisco is uh, similar to like a, in my opinion, to like a Martinique rum kind of. So it's got like those like earthy flavors to it. But you've got the dill on there, so you're kind of already getting notes of. Um, the you know dill like cucumbery pickle kind ofness to it there even though it's not there's no vinegar so it's not pickle but what was the question oh just how, how did it taste oh how it tasted does the question come in yeah but yeah it's really light bright refreshing um i meant to throw a straw in there but when you throw a straw it's just like super easy sipper uh someone commented like you might finish the drink before you actually the ice actually melts so Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they're just, um, the sprinkles are just silver, like, I got these from Walmart, sanding sugar. I got them in the baking section. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, simple, so, simple to find. Walmart's um, Yeah, and the uh, sprinkles will start to kind of melt as well to give it like a metallic finish on the top. It's not mm -hmm. quite as sandy, more mm -hmm. like metallic sheen. Yes. That's, That's it. cool. All right. Well, that's a good start. And I'm really excited about this next one. This sounds right up my alley here. Now, I've never tried anything like this, but blueberry lemon cocktail foam. So we're going to do a cocktail foam for us. Yes. Um, okay. So the cocktail foam itself, I've already kind of got it started. Uh, this is like a, this is a large size whip, whip, makes whipped cream, um, all different types of foam. 
Uh, you can get them on Amazon. They're great for the kitchen, great for cocktails. Um, this one is a lot larger and a like little bit higher quality. I sold it from the bar for tonight, but you can find one for <laughs> 40 bucks max, maybe even 25. I saw one for earlier for 25, but they come in handy. Uh, you know, they're pretty fun to play around with, especially if you're adding like foam as an element to your cocktails. So the one that I did is um, a blueberry syrup which uh, the brand that I used was Real, um, but you could also use any sort of like blueberry liqueur. Uh, so I did six ounces of that with two ounces of lemon juice and two ounces of vodka to stable it. And then a packet of gelatin. So you wanna add this kind of slowly because if you don't, it'll, um, I guess, you know, start to coagulate a little bit on the top there and get clumpy, which you don't want. So I just add a little, give it a stir. So it's just one packet of that. Okay. So the way this, so it's all in here um, and eight ounces of egg whites. So I just bought a carton of egg whites. So okay. kind of mix it up and then you're going to take this bad boy and screw it on here. Um, and it comes with two separate parts on the top. So this is, uh, if you buy one of these, they'll give you like different little, um, I guess, decorating tips. So you screw that on there. And then this is where this unscrews off also. And um, this is a charger. So, so it's like CO2 CO or something? What is that? Uh, yeah, CO2. And um, you put that in there and then you just screw it on and it'll release that air into the whip. So I let that go for like, give it a shake. And then let that sit for at least 30 seconds. So while that's going on, we're gonna make the cocktail itself, which I've named Sweet Melody. Um, whoops. After, uh, it's a lyric. It's fine. Um, a lyric in Blueberry Hill by Chuck Berry. So that's the inspiration there. So we've got two mm -hmm. dashes of Aztec chocolate bitters, which I've recently fallen in love with. Um, and then we're gonna do sorry, um, half an ounce of Aperol. And one ounce of Carpano Antica, which is a really nice, rich, sweet remove. And an ounce and a half of um, a blueberry and sage infused tequila. Uh, to make this, all I did was take like a pint of blueberries, muddle it up, okay. six sage leaves, and I just added a bottle of tequila in a big mason jar. And I let that sit for 48 hours and just every so often like gave it a shake. And it's uh, this beautiful color here. So we're gonna do an ounce and a half of that. Seems like it'd be pretty good to hang on to Courtney's house. She's got a lot of these experiments going on at any given time, apparently. <laughs> no, <laughs> there are like so many unlabeled jars everywhere. <laughs> right. Gosh, my nose is constantly like, what is this? So I'm gonna stir that. A little. Full bar spoon. And then pour it in this glass here. So um, this glass is called a Nick and Nora glass. It's one of my favorite things ever. So it's just so beautiful. So we let that charge. Got to do it one more time. Uh, so that'll just give it a really nice um, consistency. It won't die too soon on you in the cocktail. Make it a little bit thicker. Okay. So when you dispense it though, and you use it, you actually want to hold it upside down into, let's see if I can get this on here. 
Okay. Okay. Hopefully it's we can see it. Yeah, that'll be good. We nervous. <laughs> I'm glad we did the second camera this time. Yeah. So yeah, you just kind of put that oh, on there. Yeah. That's cool. Um garnish with the sage leaf, but I forgot that outside. So this is a uh, sweet melody. Damn, I want yeah. one of those. That looks cool. It's so good. It's um I love Negronis. It's a riff on a Negroni, but it tastes like um kind of like chocolate covered blueberry. Mm -hmm. with sage so it's so great kevin needs your help uh okay. ma making the plea to his wife that uh he needs one of those foamers um i mean right away i would think for around the holidays for pies and stuff like that that's a, that's oh, a good yeah. time because you could just do whipped cream through there make your own whipped cream yes go to an ice cream store where the guy made his own whipped cream and it, it's noticeably better than what you get from the store for sure oh it's incredible and it's so yeah. easy i mean it's so simple to use um I'm trying to read these as well. Uh, but I mean, you literally just put cream in there. Someone at Old Hickory just put some cinnamon and uh, Jim Beam vanilla with heavy cream in it. And it was just like the best whipped cream I've ever had in my life. Wow. Yeah. Who literally walk around and be like, put your finger out. And you just kept it. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so, I mean, you can get them like incredibly affordable. So for like $25, there are some on Amazon. Um, you don't need to convince, you know, just tell her that one thing and she's sold for sure. <laughs> but multifunctional, it's not just cocktails. You can come up with stuff in the kitchen to use it for as well. Her anniversary is next month and she loves to cook. So that's, that's an easy sell then. Yeah. Yeah. So this one, I mean, I don't know how bougie you want to get, but this one is very large and it costs about a hundred dollars. Whoa. That's an ISI. It's one of the best like culinary whip whips you can get, but. Yeah, yeah, Kevin, you probably don't need to get to that level, but yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> how much does she like to cook, you know? So I like yeah. how Kevin has totally turned around to pitching the idea to now giving it as a gift. So he's he's <laughs> not for you. <laughs> he's figured out how to, how to get what he yeah. wants by by giving it to her. <laughs> Smart man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's that's good, Kevin. This is yeah, yeah, this is why he's been married so long and has a happy marriage. He's figured he's figured it out. Kevin's figured it out. Yeah. Yeah. What's next? Okay. What's next? Oh, my new card in front of me. Okay. Uh, this uh, you talk about uh, hot right now. Uh, you know, smoked cocktails and that that stuff's all the rage. So you've got something special for us tonight, which seems to go well with Halloween. So I think. Yes, I'm so excited about this one actually. Okay, so for starters, I got sent this really great smoker that I'm like obsessed with. It's fog. Fog Hat by 1000 Oaks Barrel. Uh, so the way that this works, it's different than your like a classic smoking gun wood chip situation that um, I've seen before. I've never actually seen a product like this until it was sent to me. Uh, so it has this little reservoir here with some holes. And inside, there's a mesh um, catch-all where you put your wood chips in there and then you light it with the torch and you put the little top on it and the smoke comes out of here. It's so, it's so nifty. Like I was actually blown away because I thought it was so cool. Yes. Um, uh, they're actually our newest sponsor of the show. I'm very proud uh, of that. They, they make great products. Uh, they do at home barrels too. And uh, we do like Stephanie uh, can talk to this. Typically when I bought barrels from the store, I bought them from the liquor store before those things leak. And I, I, I can't even get where I can get them not to leak. I, I do all the things they tell you and they leak it. And McNew, you got one of their barrels and that thing didn't leak on you. Um, yeah, that was a fantastic part. And I've had previous barrels and they literally made everything taste like cinnamon. It did not matter what I put in these things. They tasted like cinnamon. This barrel doesn't do it. It tastes like what you'd expect and what your product to taste like. Yeah, that's cool. I'm very, very uh, thrilled to have them as because it makes sense. It's uh, you know, so great. Products that our audience likes. And then they, the CEO of the company came on and, and uh, he did a demonstration for me of the product Courtney's got. And then I was like, I got the person you need to get one in the hands of. And uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. Courtney, I, I, before we talk about you know the, this final uh, recipe and cocktail and all that kind of stuff, what was the reaction of that product to, to your fellow bartenders? Because you took it into the bar. What did they think of that? I did. No, they just kept taking videos of it because, like I said, it's not what we're used to whereas um so like i said we have hickory boards 
And so we'll just take our torch and like light them up and then put the glass on top of it so the glass gets smoked. But this, it's this um, contraption. The way it cascades Ooh. down into the glass is even a show. I mean, right. it's, it's yeah. cool. But you'll see that this um, doesn't just smoke the glass, it kind of smokes the cocktail as well and it rests in there like so well. Um, most of the time you'll lift the glass up and there goes the smoke also yeah. it's kind of there it stays a little bit on the glass itself but this i don't know how it works but it literally just sits in the glass and it does not want to leave so it's, it's it looks like a, a scary movie like if it, when they show like a graveyard you know because they have that kind of fog <laughs> that just sits there right on the ground that's that's quite a, kind of what it looks like with one of those so yeah so um dave i'm actually going to use it for this cocktail so um i'm talking about it now and then i'll i'll just show yes. you guys and I you owe me a write-up for that courtney don't forget yeah, so uh, <laughs> not to put you on the spot. <laughs> I'm doing that after this. No, no, it's not anything you need to do tonight. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so it's really cool. So I'm gonna use that. Um, but we're gonna get started with building the actual cocktail. Uh, I'm pulling out my little skeleton wine glass for just to catch those aromatics from the smoke. Uh, so I suggest for this cocktail using a wine glass, or if you have one of those larger, like, um, Canadian Glencairns, that would work really well also. So, uh, for this, ooh, I called it, um, black, black magic woe man, because like woman, you know, but, uh, it's a spicy cocktail and it's black. So it's kind of takes you by surprise. So for that, um, got my little pint glass for muddling here. I just got one lemon wedge and then I did three really thin serrano pepper slices. Okay. And so you just muddle that up. Uh, so I chose to do a lemon wedge uh, to muddle that instead of just doing lemon juice because you're also going to get the oils from the lemon uh, peel as well, which I love, um, really lends itself to this cocktail. And then I've got a quarter of an ounce of amaretto and a quarter of an ounce of um, the lovely gift from Mr. Rick Brenner, the prickly ash bitters. Oh, wow. Yeah. Rick. Which, uh, gosh, I've been like, I just take the smallest sips out of this because I want to save it forever, you know. So a quarter ounce of this. And then back to the rye. I've got an ounce and a half, uh, did I do an ounce? An ounce and a half of Rittenhouse. So Courtney, you're inside right now. I, I, initially, I thought you were outside, and that was a full moon back there. But that's all lighting and your interior yeah. somewhere. That's cool. That's good. That's yeah. it was the perfect <laughs> Halloween backdrop for sure. Yeah. Okay. Oh, and also, um, I got this. If I can find it behind my pumpkin. Where did it go? I'm a mess. Hold on. Stand by. Where is it? I can see your torch in your glass <laughs> and, the, and the pumpkin. That's all I can help with. Ready. <laughs> I literally cannot find this. Did I put it down here? It's activated charcoal. It's the most important part. Oh, it's literally right in front of my face. <laughs> okay. So um, I just did do like a little baby amount. That's a bar spoon. That's how much I just throw that in there. Okay. Um, yeah, stir it up. So that goes in the drink? Yeah. Okay. And then you're going to pour it into the glass. made a large ice cube with some stuff to it. <laughs> this is a hot mess. Hold on. <laughs> Breaking it up, okay. Put that 
that in there. Kind of melted a little bit just sitting here, but so this is the cocktail. It's black, it's cool. Who doesn't love that? But then got your little smoker and it just sits on top of the glass like this. So I'm using the old hickory um, wood chips, wood shavings. It's what I it's what I know best, old hickory. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, so just put that in there. <laughs> yeah. But they also sent me um, like a berry one, which is really cool. Uh, it smells amazing. And then a uh, different type of just wood shaving. So, but I love hickory, uh, especially this time of year. So just literally just take your little torch and light that. Let's see if I can hold it. So as you're doing this, you can kind of see. See how it just falls down like, like rain going in there? Yeah. Like it's yeah, that's good. Yeah. And then you just put the top on there. And so the smoke keeps coming oh. out for a bit. Yep. And then it's such a different experience than just the typical, like I said, smoke glass, and then you build the cocktail in there. Uh that's all gone. But this it'll it stays in there. You hand okay, them a glass. Get off. Yeah, look at that. And it's just hanging out. Yeah. It literally, I mean, look at that. I mean, if you move, it'll it'll jump out yeah. from the from the motion, but it just sits there. If you've got that sit on the bar, it just sits in the glass, which is yeah. I don't Especially know how they did this. When I did it with the Glen Karen, it really because the Glen, you know, obviously Glen Glen Karens go like that, so it just sat in the bottom. I just put a whiskey pour in there, and it just hung out even as you were drinking it. So just a little lemon as well, mm -hmm. lemon twist. I see it. Black Magic Woman. So good. Nice. Yep. yep. I like that y'all just get to watch me drink. <laughs> this is this is what we do once a month. Watch <laughs> Courtney drink. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Y'all have any questions? Okay, so oh, wait, yeah. The oh, wait, there's more. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like I'll keep talking. Uh, the activated charcoal I got on Amazon as well, my favorite place. It's, it was less than $7 for this uh, whole container, which will last you possibly forever. But you can also get activated charcoal ca um, capsules. If they have loose powder in them, that will break open. Okay. It doesn't change the flavor like at all. Uh, it just makes it black and they say that it detoxifies, so. What does the drink taste like? So it's a, it's spicy lemon. It's uh, yeah, it tastes like lemon oil with the Serrano spice, which I love. And then it's basically a rye old fashioned. Really? Spice, yeah, if I had to think about it. I mean, the prickly ash bitters are awesome. It's a really uh, bitter Amaro in here, but this stuff is so good. Um, I can't really think off the top of my head of any other Amaro that's similar to this, which makes it, you know, desirable. But yeah. Rick, you, you got that. I know you got it in person when you were out in Kansas. Uh, have you researched it when you're ready to reorder? Can you get that through Amazon or can you get it from a certain sure, website? The place you can get that is at the distillery. Okay. So. I could be wrong on that, but. Uh, okay. I wonder if they would ship that because that, that they could ship even, uh, that, even though. It's seventy proof. Uh, it's seventy proof. Okay. Yeah, but it's 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 those additives fall under different rules, even though they can be very high proof. Even like, uh, 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 what's the you know the, the things that they make with the vodka and yeah, like uh, um, I got when I was food flavorings. Yeah. You know. Talked to the owner, talked to their marketing manager, and talked to their head distiller on three different occasions. So. Oh yeah. Well, I think he, if I needed yeah. more, I could probably imagine that. Rick was by a distillery and became a regular there while he was there. For <laughs> six weeks. Yeah, yeah, imagine that. Uh, huh. Yeah, yeah I wonder. The legend. Yeah, they, they offered me a uh, they offered me a private tour. They weren't doing any tours, but after talking for a while with their marketing manager, he says, uh, "Would you like to take a walk around and tour the place?" i have like, "I thought you'd never ask." <laughs> you insist. Yes. Yeah, I don't know. Um. Have y'all ever heard of Underberg before? Underberg. Uh, so it's like an it's like supposed to be the super digestive, like help with your stomach and wake you up a little bit. But it comes in these little tiny bottles. 
Um, but it's, you know, it's, I can't remember the proof on it, but it is alcohol, you know, it's in Amaro. So you, but they sell that on Amazon. Yeah. You can get like 10 of them. So I wonder if you can get other bitters on Amazon. I've never thought to look. Yeah, bitters, yeah. even, even the, if they're high alcohol that you are allowed to sell it because it's classified different, which makes kind of no sense, but, um, do we know Underberg? <laughs> <laughs> Would you like an Underberg? <laughs> <laughs> like, how many caps do you have saved up at this point? Uh, no, he actually won that at a at, a, at an event. I don't. Th it wasn't an Underberg event. It was something un else. It was an Underberg event. <laughs> it's my bandolero. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Okay. I I'll wear this in Key West, Steve. <laughs> nice. <laughs> if we can get it there. And and hand out Underberg. Okay. All right. I like that. <laughs> Courtney, your next one here has got me pretty pumped up because I I, I want to know if this has uh use beyond just cocktails because uh I like I like the idea of the start of a spiced maple syrup. So tell us about this. Oh, it's so great. Yeah. So spiced maple syrup is really similar to the uh mold wine syrup that I made. Um so I'm trying, sorry. Yeah, so you throw, um, you'll get the recipe. My computer is not fun, but it's uh, cardamom palms, pods with allspice berries, cinnamon sticks, um, cloves. And then, so, you know, really similar to how we made the mold wine syrup, you toast the spices, and then you're gonna add a cup of the maple syrup to the saucepan kind of let that incorporate itself for, for a couple of minutes and then take it off and set it aside to cool and then it's good to use. So you don't have to let it sit overnight. You can, but you don't have to. Um, so that's the only big difference, but it's so delicious. Uh, yeah, you can use that, man, so many things. Talk about pancakes. And yes, wash. that's where I'm thinking right away. Yeah. I'm not On thinking cocktails, I'm thinking pancakes right away, so yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So. Yeah, maybe I'll do that in the morning. Yeah, that sounds pretty good. <laughs> yeah, so uh, delicious. So we've got that maple syrup, spiced maple syrup. So you've got, um, you're going to do half an ounce of that. Mm -hmm. And then what else do I have? Okay, so, so this I did as a part, I'm going to back up a little bit. I also included how to make this into a, party cocktail, like large size portions, uh, in which case this pumpkin is going to come in so handy. So, but what I'm going to do right now is just make a single serving of it. Uh, so it's going to be half an ounce of maple syrup, the spiced maple syrup, and then three quarters of an ounce of uh, fresh pressed orange juice, half an ounce of the lemon juice, and then uh, Jameson cold brew. Do an ounce and a half of that. You could also use Jaeger cold brew. Oh, there you go. Another love of my life. And I've uh, got this just one bar spoon of pumpkin puree. Put that in there. So when you make this uh, in like a large format, you're just kind of going to stir it all up because it does have that puree in there. You don't have to like shake it or anything. Um, and then just top it with, I strained it into a rocks glass. Try not to spill. And then um, you could top it with soda water, Prosecco, or apple cider, sparkling apple cider. I have this woodchuck hard apple cider, so. Okay. Yeah, so just a little bit of that. And then you uh, garnish with a cinnamon stick. Excellent. That's it. Yeah. Um, but this is where the fun part comes. Okay. So I've got this pumpkin. Let me try and make some room. Okay. Does it fit? No. I'm just going to tilt my camera down. Okay. So this pumpkin, it's not the 
best size pumpkin. I would go for something a little wider if you can find it. But um, ooh, take an oven mitt. <laughs> and <laughs> the secret ingredient that won't cooperate. Okay. Dry ice. Dry ice, yes. Yeah. So we're going to put that in there. And you're going to want to add some water to this. You can do um, hot or cold water. Uh, but if you do hot water, the dry ice will obviously like just stay and go away quite a bit faster. I'm just going to put the regular ice in there. But you don't want to store your uh, dry ice in the freezer. That could actually kill your freezer if you did that. So don't do that if you're if you're planning on doing this. So put your dry ice in there, and then you've got this like really spooky. Yes. Yes. Let's go. Um, should add some more water in there. Here. Okay. So got that, and then you're gonna put a bowl in here. And the more that the, I put ice in there also, I forgot to add some water to it, but um, put some water on the side. But yeah, so you just set a bowl in there and then you wanna put your water and then you pour a cocktail in there. Um, ideally, you, yeah, like I said, you'll have a wider pumpkin in a bigger bowl and it's a party punch. And so you just throw a ladle in there and some cinnamon sticks on the side and your friends can just scoop it out and Let's see if I have any more water. I don't. Anyway, yeah. It'll, if you add like proper water to it on the sides, here, let me get my phone. So you got like a separation here. Just pour a bunch of water in the sides and then you'll get a, a bunch of smoke coming out. Okay. Yeah. That's it. So fun. And then it's like a party thing. You could also just set like dry ice and water on your porch on Halloween. Hmm. All of the day. Yeah. It's fun. Yeah, that's cool. Yes. So I might do that actually after this, but yeah. Well, yeah, I mean you've got it. Why not, right? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I didn't know that you can't put dry ice in your freezer though, huh? Yes. Uh would not recommend. Everything I read was like don't store dry ice in your freezer. You can I put mine in an ice chest, like small little ice chest. Or um, a styrofoam container, oddly enough. But yeah, if you put in your fridge, because so something about it's frozen carbon dioxide. Mm -hmm. So if you, I guess, put in your freezer, like it's colder than the freezer can actually get. So then it'll discombobulate it and like ruin it potentially. So okay. yeah. It'll cool down. But also freezer. don't touch it with your hands. That's why I use the oven. Don't do that. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. So. All right. Well, <laughs> Courtney, great job as always. You you brought the uh the Halloween stuff to us this time. That was great. I I tried. You you definitely got to, <laughs> we're we're great with the theme. So questions for Courtney. We always like to leave time at the end for questions. What questions for Courtney do we have? Anything. Do y'all want to see anything next time? How about some winter warmers for next time? Like warm cocktails? Yes. Christmassy winter warmers. Okay. Winter warmers. Okay. Our next yeah. date is, uh, is set now, by the way. Parties and stuff. What's that? Some batch cocktails that would work well for uh, holiday parties and stuff or any party. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah, we're going to do that. Yeah, I think that's good. For sure. Yeah. It's a good idea. Uh, so many po uh, holiday parties, and it's good to be a, a yeah. ahead of the game. Mm -hmm. so, yes. Go quick, ahead. A little quick research on shipping prickly ash bitters. They will ship them to Florida. They'll ship them to Indiana. They'll ship them to Illinois. They won't ship them to Kentucky or Missouri. Okay. okay. They will actually ship them to Missouri through the for whiskey lovers. Yeah. But so, well, uh, I mean, directly through their their thing. But uh, yeah, but they're but you can you can order them right from the distillery. Just send them, mail them to Adam Stomp. He'll get them to us. 
You can mail them to me. <laughs> I can mail them through Old Hickory. <laughs> Legal yeah. that way. Oh, yeah. Ship the stumpies, you know. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Steve can pick them up. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'll be there. Something you That's... can actually ship to Illinois. Wow. <laughs> yeah. How about that? Wow. You Walt, you're you're good. You're in Illinois, so you're good. Yeah. Uh, Where was that from? Where what? Uh, oh, Boot Hill Distillery in uh, Boot Hill, Dodge City, okay. Kansas. Dodge yeah. City. Okay. Yep, and they'll be on the next uh, events we've got coming up. So uh, yeah. Ne- yeah, next month, uh, we've got our flagship whiskey series, and they're part of that. So I don't okay. know if they're cool. on the first date or the second, but they're part of it if you've signed up. Yeah, the original Perkley Ash Bitters was developed by a doctor that was from St. Louis. Oh, there you go. Mm -hmm. I like when it has a St. Louis connection. (laughs) And Boot Hill Distillery, through a lot of research, resurrected the recipe. Cool. That's so cool. I love that. Mm -hmm. Our next event will be Monday, November 23rd. So mark that down. Uh, As a bonus, since that's right before Thanksgiving, I'm going to share. I'm going to also be sharing this on the Bourbon Daily the day before Thanksgiving. But I've got a an aged eggnog recipe that uh, they suggest you make on Thanksgiving to to do that for Christmas Day. So it's one that I used in the past before I stole Bronner's recipe from Bourbon's Bistro. Uh, this is the one that I used to make. So uh, and I'm going to make it again this year. I haven't I haven't done an, an aged one because Bronner's doesn't require aging. Uh, but I'm I'm going to do that this year. So I'll share that recipe with the group. Uh, um, at Courtney's thing, if she'll allow me to, I'll, I should have asked her offline. So are we co are we co Barton class? <laughs> <laughs> no, I have no skills, but I I do like a good aged eggnog. So I'll, I'll I oh, can please, yeah, <laughs> love that. Yeah, so that'll get you just in time to make it on Thanksgiving Day, and then you'll have it ready and perfect for Christmas Day. So that's cool. That's Age awesome. is about a month. Yeah. So which some people freak out about that. It's got raw eggs in it. So raw eggs sitting out unrefrigerated. So it depends on how bold you are, if you're interested in trying that. So Yeah. I hadn't actually heard about aged eggnog until this past year. Mm-hmm. One, of, um, one of my friends asked me if we had any leftover from our miracle pop-up bar that we do. And we didn't, but he's, he was like, Oh, I wanted to try aging eggnog. And I was like, what? <laughs> and he told me about it. It's like, Okay. I mean, if other people do it, it's got to be fine, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's what I figured the alcohol. Yeah. No, I'm down for trying. Uh, The guy who did that recipe actually did some of the science behind it. I can bring that too to read that Uh, again, but if you're totally uncomfortable with that and you don't want, you shouldn't do it. Uh, But yeah, it's, it's something that, uh, you know, it's been. How do you you age eggnog? You, you, you mix up the ingredients and you just leave it l- out literally. And uh, on, on this one, this one, you don't even totally cover it. You leave it a little exposure to the air. So, okay. uh, really? w- which is pretty wild. Um, but it, like I said, I've had, and you can, you can get around the egg thing too. You can get pasteurized eggs if that really scares you. But um, uh, so they do have those at the grocery store, but it's man, it's good. It's, it's marketedly different than, uh, than just regular eggnog you make up that day with the exception of Bronner's. His is the best. <laughs> which is now mine Bronner's and Akeley's eggnog recipe <laughs> yeah I would love to know the science behind that though so yeah please please tell yes yeah so I, <laughs> like I said I do have a little report about that so I'll uh, I'll bring that too just to Ooh. talk about the science and why you can uh, drink something that is set uh, eggs unrefrigerated raw for a month <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> sounds terrible like my mom will never drink that she she freaks out about that when i'm drinking that on christmas day but um it's fine so yeah, she just it's not for her yeah which i don't know i can't blame her you're really <laughs> selling it there steve yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It, uh, I'm telling you, it's got to be good. It's got to be good. So, uh, because it's been around for a long time and that's how, I mean, that's how they've always made eggnog. So, uh, also, um, this is, uh, Chris Allsbrook's birthday Eve, the next one. So oh. little birthday Eve. So yeah, we'll have to make a special cocktail for Chris for, I can do Eve. that. Yeah, for sure. I would love to yeah. have a shrub in it. Oh, yeah, it's got, yeah. It apparently has well, to. Yes. To <laughs> <laughs> yes. A shrub yeah. with Weller. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> I have a question about the smoker. So, okay. 
um, it comes with like, well, I see that they have like little packets of the wood chips. Mm -hmm. About how many, how much wood chips do you put in the smoker? Oh my God. Hardly anything, honestly. Yeah. Okay. It comes in like an Altoids type of tin, the, yeah. right. but, but, but you hardly use any of it. So it seems like I, it would last a long time. Yeah. Like a pinch. Okay. And it's packed. So, oh, I've already gone. This is, this is like okay. after many uses. Okay. Many, many uses. And I literally just go like that and that's it. Cause I was looking at a smoking gun, but that just looks so much easier. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does. We, we've got a smoking yeah. gun and that looks way, way, way easier yeah. for a cocktail. I mean, it's, it's great for um, <clears throat> home use cocktails, you know, uh, because it's just, I mean, it's single use, obviously, like you can only use it at one cocktail per time, but it does the job like so incredibly well. Mm -hmm. I love this thing. I'm so, so fortunate to have it, but they also do giveaways on Fridays. So cool. it's a little plug. Yeah. Um, if you go to their Instagram, Thousand Oaks Barrel, Thousand Oaks Barrel Company. Yeah. Um, CO. So yeah, Thousand Oaks yeah, Barrel Company. Yeah. Um, on, Instagram. on Fridays, they do a giveaway. Just a great company. Gosh, they're great to work with. Uh, they're really good people. Um, so, yeah. And McNew's got that, that thing that they sent her, which is interesting, too, because it's 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 a little unique. It's not just aging, um, you know, like a white dog to try to turn it into bourbon. It's about starting with neutral grain spirits and then creating these alcohols that taste like other spirits. They give you this, these little, I don't know, what do they call it, McNew? They're, the base. Um, they're called essence packets. Okay, yeah. And... They give you these, I got, I think there's 12 of them and a little book that's like a passport and they're packets that help whatever you put in this barrel taste like whiskeys around the world. So there's like a peated one, there's a bourbon one, there's a weeded one, there's a Indian Canadian whiskey. Rye. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's a Mexican one too, which I'm kind of curious about, but afraid of. So uh, <laughs> they give you, you get like an education in the little passport book and you get the essence packets that you can, you can use vodka. I will probably use moonshine next time though. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's uh, very, very cool. So yeah, uh, I'm glad that, uh, that glad they're turning out good. I mean, so mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, you did a, you did the, the weeded one. And so your thoughts on that? Uh, I liked it. Um, you're you're, I you're an expert in the area of weeded. Th Bourbon. Those are definitely my favorite bourbons. Um, so it was the red winter wheat, which you would think Maker's Mark. It doesn't really taste like Maker's Mark, but it's super drinkable. I uh, I bottled it the other day. I'm, <laughs> I'll probably throw it into some cocktails. I don't think I'm going to drink it neat, but uh -huh. oh, that's you, cool. you can definitely go with some cocktails. That's, that's cool. Mm -hmm. That's fun. Okay. Yeah. What else do you guys have for Courtney? Enjoyed all those, Courtney really yeah. cool oh, yeah. oh yeah, neat. also thank i just want to say thank you for not being like super basic and doing apple and pumpkin for fall you're just oh. super unique and amazing <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah really good stuff courtney thank you yeah, thank you courtney i got all kinds of great ideas yeah. oh man y'all's cocktails are <laughs> i love watching their progression um after every month that we do this and then when you submit for the cocktail competition it's just so like for me it's like oh they did a show where they like did it like, <laughs> makes me so happy but no i'm so glad y'all are enjoying everything it, it means a lot that y'all are joining so thanks a lot of fun <laughs> yeah very cool yeah. when you made the when you made the green ice was uh -huh. that water with food coloring or what did you do no that i well i have a juicer here um like one of the not like a hand, I have a hand press juicer, which you could also, I mean, you could right. use many ways, but it's one that has like a motor that kind of turns like a little wheel. Mm -hmm. And so you throw the cucumber in there and then it like goes through and then the juice oh, okay. comes out. Uh, so I did that and that's literally, I mean, they're kind of melting now, but um, no, that's the color of the cucumber juice. Well, and water. So it's diluted down. It's not even like just cucumber. Right water also yeah it's so cool just the cocktail itself has um the food coloring which you can still see is like holding up really well mm -hmm. cool. yeah 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 i absolutely love flavored cock i'm um, flavored ice because i think like you said as it melts and you know dilutes and stuff it just the whole cocktail or complexity of the cocktail changes so i know it's big fun. fan of ices so 
Yeah. That's my, I mean, that's my whole thing. Like I just try to have fun when I build cocktails. I don't want to be basic and like, <laughs> you know, just obviously like, Oh, people love pumpkin spice. Sure. Great. But you know, you could also do something like make a blueberry foam and then it, t it tastes like you're drinking chocolate covered blueberries. It's just more fun that way. I think, wow. you know, and it's super easy to make. Like that's incredibly easy. Anybody can do that. It just is, it just doesn't seem as approachable as it is. So I'm here to help you. If you ever have any questions about like how to achieve something, if you have an idea, you can, you can shoot me a message too. Kevin, no cheating. <laughs> What's that? We're looking at you, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> and Dave. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because we're outnumbered by Adina and Chris. <laughs> it's it's two versus two, but it it, it, doesn't, it doesn't add up. No, 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 I agree. Hopefully there won't be a hurricane in, near your area on the next time that you're on. It seems I like know. every I'm time like, that you're on, there's a hurricane hidden. I know, right? That's why I was like, hope I texted Steve earlier. I was like, right. hope the power stays with me because I mean you probably can't hear it, but the wind is insane right now. It's like all I can hear in the background. So um, Pensacola Police Department has started like posting really funny things on their Facebook. And they're like, if you hear a freight train outside, don't open the door because it's not there. <laughs> We're in a tornado warning. So yeah, hmm. Very it'll cool. end soon it's, enough, right? Hurricane season. Stay yeah. safe yeah. out there. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Well, Courtney, as always, thank you for what you do. We really appreciate it. It was fun for, for our audience. Uh, I will be sending you an email tomorrow. It will have uh, the, the recipes, everything that uh, you heard about today. I've got, already got all that, so we don't, no worries. It'll definitely go out. I'll send a, a copy of the video, so a link to it. So where in case you, there's anything that you want to see get done, you've obviously were on here tonight, but if there's anything that uh, you want to see uh, how Courtney did it, uh, you'll have the opportunity to do that. And then I'll send you a link to next month's um, issue on uh, November 23rd. So I'll get that set up tomorrow morning and then send everything out. Okay. Cool. All right. Wonderful. That was good. All right. Take cool. care. Thanks everybody. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. Right. Cheers. Cheers.